Hello everyone, you saw the thumbnail, and you saw the title. Yep, it's time for Escanor. So, what if Deku was the reincarnation of Escanor, part 1? Now, let's begin. Our story starts off with Deku being born just as usual, and his life being mostly the same until whenever he was like 6 to 7 years old. The only difference is that whenever Deku was, let's say, 3 to 4 years old, whenever he sleeps, he would start to have dreams. Dreams about a certain very, very muscular man, and also another very, very skinny man. And even though these two people look alike, their personalities are completely different, in fact, polar opposites. Now, whenever Deku was about 7 years old and in school, he would have been bullied just as usual for not having a quirk, with Bakugo throwing explosions at Deku along with his goons beating up Deku. Deku, at that moment, would have felt something in him. As whenever Bakugo threw another explosion at Deku, Deku would have grabbed Bakugo by his wrist. This surprising Bakugo, as Deku would start to get more muscular. With Deku having to tower over Bakugo, he would have said, Kachan, no, Katsuki Bakugo. You said you want to be the strongest hero, yet you act like a villain. You said your quirk is the strongest, yet it only produces sparkles. Comparing your words with your strength, you still believe you can become the strongest? <laughs> How presumptuous of you. Uh, what the? Let go of me, you stupid nerd! Deku sighing and just letting go of Bakugo. Him turning around and leaving. However, while Deku was doing that, Bakugo would have yelled, Deku, you lied to me, you damn nerd! You say you don't have a quirk, but you do! Are you looking down on me? No, let me tell you. Just because you have a quirk doesn't mean that you're stronger than me. Don't look down on me, you little shit! Deku, hearing that, he would have stopped, turned his head towards Bakugo, and said, Why should I look down on someone that is obviously weaker than me? I only pity them. As Deku, after saying that, he would have just continued to walk forwards towards, well, the classroom. Him walking into the classroom, packing up his stuff, and was about to leave the classroom. However, whenever Deku was just about to walk out of the classroom, his teacher would have said, Hey, mister, where do you think you're going with that bag? It belongs to my student. Deku, who's about just as tall as the teacher, if not just a tiny bit shorter, he would have said, Pardon me, I feel sick looking up on someone that is smaller than me. After saying that, Deku would have just left the classroom, if not left the school, and just literally jump out of there. Now, about the time of sunset, Inko, who called the police since she just, well, lost her son, she would have been of course worried and is staying in her house, not knowing what to do, as that was when she would have heard her door ring, or just the doorbell going off. Her arriving at the door, opening it a bit, and asking who is it. And to her surprise, it's actually Deku, him asking his mom if he could enter. Ingo being relieved that her son is fine, she would have immediately opened the door fully 
and hug him. However, that was when she would have felt that something is off. Her asking Deku if he got muscles, and also gotten a bit taller. To which Deku would just tell Inko that he will talk about that when they are inside the house. Which, after they got into the house, Deku would start explaining that since whenever he was 4 to 3 years old, he's been having this dream, a dream about two men, and are actually one man. Him continuing to explain that this new power that he just got is similar to the man in his dream, which was called Sunshine. And after explaining how Sunshine works, Inko would understand why Deku became taller, more muscular, and with his personality changing. Now, after this, Deku would start telling his mom that maybe he should drop out of school, since right now, he cannot control his power and our sunshine. So, Deku might actually accidentally kill someone by just slapping them in the back. Not only that, since sunshine makes Deku stronger and his body temperature hotter, along with the rise and fall of the sun, Deku can actually hurt someone by just standing right next to them. Which is why Deku wants to drop off school, so that he could train to learn and control this power of his. Inko not wanting Deku to be in prison for accidentally killing someone, she would have to grudgingly accept this offer, or up this idea. Now, for the next 4 years, Deku, he would have dropped out of school, and in that time, he would have started to train, learning to control sunshine. Well, actually, he is just learning to hold himself back so that whenever he, for example, slaps someone in the back, he will not actually kill that person. Oh yeah, if you're wondering, just because Deku isn't at school, doesn't mean that he won't learn by himself, since for those 4 years, Deku is homeschool, by himself, on a mountain. Why? So that he could learn and train at the same time, along with learning to control the heat around his body so that he doesn't burn his books just by being in the vicinity of them. And after those 4 years of training and learning to control sunshine, Deku, around the age of 11 and 12, he would have transferred back to his old school. As whenever Bakugo heard that Deku is coming back, he would have been, well, a bit intrigued as to why Deku left in the first place if he's just going to come back, along with getting a flashback of what happened to him and rub his arm. Now, Deku, wearing a custom-made uniform, he would have returned to school, and when his old classmates see this very large man in front of them, yeah, they would have been confused as to who this is, and when Deku introduced himself, yeah, everyone would have dropped their jaws, with the exception of being Bakugo and maybe those other two that helped Bakugo bully Deku. Since, you know, they literally saw Deku awakening his quirk. Or well, sunshine. As for their reaction to Deku being this muscular, those two who helped Bakugo bully Deku, they would have been, well, surprised and scared whenever they saw Deku, since Deku right now is actually taller than a teacher and also taller.
taller than the door of the room, along with being wider than the door because of all of his muscles. Which is why whenever Deku came into the classroom, he would have actually dipped his head and moved sideways. As for Bakugo's reaction, yeah, he would have just shouted at Deku, saying, Oi, Deku! Just because you're taller and more muscular than me, doesn't mean you're better than me. Let me tell you, I am stronger than you, you bastard. Deku, not even paying attention to what Bakugo said, he would have just walked to his seat and sat down. Bakugo, getting more frustrated seeing that Deku ignored him, but before he can do anything else, the teacher would have threatened him with, well, reporting to the principal if he doesn't sit down and shut up, basically. Bakugo grudgingly doing so. Now, at recess time, Bakugo would have tried to mess with Deku just like what he did a long time ago. But before he did, he would have gotten the flashback of when Deku first awakened his quirk. But Bakugo would just think that that is just a flinch and is a dream. Basically, thinking that that is not real. Him having to walk towards Deku's desk as he would have thrown an explosion into Deku's desk saying, Oi, Deku, don't ignore me. And just as Bakugo threw his explosion onto Deku's desk, everyone around Deku and Bakugo, they would have started to whisper to each other saying how Bakugo is going to bully Deku again. However, Deku would have just said, Why should I pay attention to a little insect that is just buzzing around trying to get my attention? Everyone hearing Deku's answer, they would have been... Uh... Yeah, you know how they feel. Bakugo being taken aback by Deku's newfound confidence, he would have said, Deku, do you really just call me a little insect? You're gonna die for that, you know that? Meet me at the playground after school, you know that? If you don't, well, I guess I'm just gonna have to go to your home and damn beat you up there. Deku just saying, Katsuki Bakugo, take your hand off my desk before I force you to do it. Oh really? Why is that? Why should I put my hand off your desk, Deku? Because, Katsuki, it is something that you are not worthy of touching. Oh, really? As Bakugo would have blasted Deku's desk in front of Deku saying, TOUCH! And just as Bakugo said that, Deku would have grabbed Bakugo by his face and thrown him out the window. Bakugo, while he's outside of the window, he would have been surprised and shocked to see that Deku actually literally throw him out the window. And now he's falling down from, let's say, four floors above ground. Him having to blast explosions to slow down his fall, Bakugo would have landed onto the playground, and whenever he did, Deku would have followed him and jumped off the window, as Deku would have landed in front of Bakugo, and whenever he did, everyone from inside the school, they would have looked out the window to see that Deku, oh well, a new guy, is scurrying off with Bakugo or just basically facing off with Bakugo, to which everyone is very intrigued by. Deku, you really wanted to fight, didn't you? Well, you should have just asked for one. Bakugo saying that while having sparkles of explosions coming out of his palms. Deku responding with, Fight? No, no, no. I wouldn't even need to break a sweat to defeat you. So let's not call it fight, let's call it punishment for being born into my world. Bakugo hearing that, he would have just thrown an explosion behind him 
to propel himself straight towards Deku. Him yelling, That's it! Die! Him having to throw a giant explosion point black into Deku's face. To which, after the smoke clears, Bakugo would have just saw Deku standing at the same spot without a scratch on his face or even his body. The only places that was damaged was his clothes. Bakugo seeing that, he would have been stunned as to how powerful Deku is. As Deku, without saying a word, he would have just punched Bakugo in the face which would have sent him into the ground unconscious. By the way, Deku held back like 90-95% to 95 of his strength so that he doesn't kill Bakugo in one shot, and or one punch. And just as Deku did that, the teachers would have arrived at the scene only to find Bakugo on the ground, unconscious, and in a somewhat of a crater, along with Deku standing on top of Bakugo's body, and by on top, I mean right next to him. As the teacher was inspecting Bakugo's injuries and trying to bring him to the infirmary, the other teachers would have asked Deku what happened. To which Deku just says, Bakugo wanted to bully him, and he doesn't like being bullied, so he insulted Bakugo. Bakugo, not liking that insultment, he threw an explosion into Deku's things. Deku, not liking that, he thrown Bakugo out of the window, and for some reason, jumped after him. Bakugo, being angry, he would have attacked Deku with his explosions, but Deku, well, being not affected and being disappointed at Bakugo, he would have just punched Baku in the face and sent him into the ground, which is what happened right now. The teacher, not knowing how to deal with this situation, he would have just called for Baku's mom and Deku's mom, telling them what happened and asking for them to arrive at the school so that they could meet face to face and talk about the situation, along with how to deal with the consequences. Now, this will be the end of part 1. If you guys want part 2, then help me reach 20 likes on this video. If it does, then I'll record and upload part 2 as quick as I can. Along with that, I also have one question, which is who should I give one for all to? So if you guys have any suggestions, then leave it in the comments down below. I'll pick the one that has the most likes. And yeah, have a nice day.